class, in this video, we're going to be looking at types of data. The learning intention of this video is for us to be able to describe data using the following keywords. Data can exist in many different forms and we can broadly sort them into two main groups, categorical data and numerical data. Categorical data involves descriptive responses. In the example down below, I've got a pie chart that illustrates the different responses people are responding in terms of getting their COVID vaccinations. The types of responses that you receive from categorical data are worded statements or descriptions. In contrast, numerical data involves collecting responses that have a number associated with them. So in my notes, I described categorical data as data where you typically receive a descriptive response. And this just means that you typically will get a word, a phrase, a sentence or a category as a response. I'd also like to add that sometimes for categorical data, you can actually get a numerical value associated with it, but most of the time you won't. But I'll explain this in a bit more detail on the next slide. In contrast, numerical data will always have a number associated with them, which can either be measured or counted. In terms of how we sort these data, categorical data can be sorted into groups or categories, whereas numerical data, because it has a value assigned to it, we can actually sort them from smallest to largest. An example of collecting categorical data would be if I was asking what was your eye color or your favorite food, as this will give me a worded response, whereas numerical data would be asking for your weight, height, or age. I would like to quickly address a misconception that many people often have, which is many people believe that any data where you collect or receive a numerical response is an example of numerical data. However, this is false. I'll give you an example of this. Let's say that I've given you a survey where I'm asking you to rate your experiences between a scale of one to five. On first glance, it may appear that the response that you're collecting is an example of numerical data. However, since each of these numbers have some kind of label or description associated with them, this is an example of categorical data instead. Please have a go at answering this question and identify whether this is an example of numerical or categorical data. If you'd answer this correctly because you're getting worded responses, this is an example of categorical data. Have a go with another question. The answer for this question over here is that this is an example of numerical data because you're collecting numbers as your responses. The next thing that I want to talk about is the subtypes of each of these main types of data. So for categorical data, this could be further classified as ordinal or nominal data, whereas for numerical data, we could further classify that as discrete or continuous data. Let's unpack what these two types of categorical data are. So categorical data can be further classified as ordinal or nominal data. Now the word ordinal sounds very similar to the word order. So you can think of ordinal data as data that can actually be ordered. An example of ordinal data is listed down below. So notice how each of these responses, very satisfied, satisfied, indifferent, dissatisfied, and very dissatisfied, there is an actual hierarchy where you can actually list or place the responses in a particular order. In contrast, nominal data, so think of no order in this case, are responses where there is no order associated with them at all. An example of this is asking, what is your favorite dog breed? In this particular example, there's no way for me to put one response above or below another response because there's no hierarchy whatsoever. So as a result of that, this is an example of nominal data. Have a go to see whether you can identify whether something is ordinal or nominal data. So have a go with this question. For this question, this is an example of ordinal data because based on these responses over here, I could place these worded responses from low to high and as a result of that, this is an example of ordinal data because it can be ordered. Have a go with another question. Similarly with this question, because I can rearrange the responses in a continuum from lowest to highest, this is an example of ordinal data. Let's now look at the subtypes of numerical data. So numerical data can be further classified as discrete or continuous data. For discrete data, we are concerned with data that can only take on a certain or a specific value. I would also like to add that for discrete data, you're generally going to get whole numbers a response, but you're not always going to be limited to them. An example of discrete data will be asking for your shoe size, the number of cars, or how many members there are in your family. In these examples, they can only take on certain values, and you can't have, for instance, three and a half members in a family because it's not possible at all. In contrast, continuous data will have numbers where it can take on any value. So typically with these responses, you can actually get decimals. Examples of continuous data would be asking for your height, your weight, the amount of mass of grapes that's sold, or the weather forecast. So in these examples, they will take on any value within a given range and you'll typically expect to see decimals. Have a go at identifying whether the following example is an example of discrete or continuous data. 
if you answer this question correctly, this is going to be an example of continuous data because the mass or the weight of a dog can always vary and take on any values within a given range. Have a go with another question. In this question, this is going to be an example of discrete data. The reason being is because the number of goals that you score can only take on fixed values. It can only take on whole numbers in this case. So this is why it's considered to be discrete rather than continuous. By now, you should be able to classify data as ordinal, nominal, discrete or continuous. I'd like you to now please answer the following questions from exercise 2a to get further practice. This is the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys again in the next video. Bye.